Welcome back. When New Zealander Rachel Hughes headed off on her OE nearly 20 years ago, she could never have imagined how much her life would change. From working as a young fashion designer in Wellington to becoming a lifeline for hundreds of young Russian children was a giant leap. But Rachel Hughes was determined to make a positive difference in the world. And she's just as passionate about what she does now as she was when she first set up her organization in Russia 15 years ago. Not that life's been easy in Vladivostok or without its challenges, but as Rachel explained to Mania Clark, living hope is helping even more young Russians than ever before. Well, basically, the children that we were working with over the years, we helped get off the streets. So we've literally helped hundreds of children off the streets every year, helping them get into state shelters, into different establishments. But what's happening now is they're all graduating from the state shelters at 18 years old, and but the problem still exists. They've got no family, nowhere to go. So the same children that were on the streets are now becoming independent but not being taught how to do it. So we're basically parenting them. We take them in and we teach them cooking, budgeting, hygiene, cleaning, um, establishing routines so that they, when they do move on from us, they're actually capable of living an independent lifestyle. So with you helping the young adults now, are they able to adjust well back in society? Some of them are more successful than others. It's a, it's a pretty uphill battle. Each child is fighting you all the way, so to speak. They're wanting their independence, but not understanding they need help to be able to make the right decisions, to understand consequences of their actions. But a lot of them now, when they are independent, come back, and we're their family, and so they you know, do appreciate what we've done and understand that if we hadn't been there for them, they wouldn't be where they are now. Another thing is that you work with young mums now. Yes, so we've um, progressed to mainly working with the young mothers. Uh, the need there is so great. The, unfortunately, 90,000 newborns are being abandoned every year in Russia by their mothers, and most of the reason is they just don't have the financial ability to take them. And so we've now provided a home where we can take the mothers from birth into our centre and work with them and train them to actually be effective parents, teaching them a lot of parenting skills. Most of them have never been parented, they've been in orphanages, so it's a whole new thing for them to learn how to love a child because they've never received love in their lives. We teach the mothers how to receive love from us, you know, uh, how to receive physical touch in a healthy way. And that's a major start to actually teaching them how to touch and love and care for their, their babies. We work with them, we teach them uh, basic parenting skills, hygiene, you know, trying to keep a mum on schedule for feeding a child is, can be very difficult. Um, teaching them emotional behavioural issues like how, how to bond with their children, how to play with them. Unfortunately, a lot of these mothers spent two or three years of their life lying in a crib, so they've got no concept of play. And so we're teaching them how the importance of actually touching and playing with their babies right from birth. Wow, and so... Um such an important thing to teach the mums how to love and how to love their children with all the children and our young adults that you've um, ministered to and are continuing to minister to. How important is it to, to show care and to show love where perhaps no one else did before? Oh, I think it's extremely important. The, the mothers aren't going to receive anything from us unless they know we care about them. And so our primary initial goal is to befriend the mothers, love on them to a way that they actually will start receiving advice from us, receiving that care from us. Otherwise, they're never going to be open to what we have for them. We're, to them, we're just another establishment, another person in authority. So we have to break those barriers of them thinking we're an authority and actually letting them understand how much we care about them and care about their children. How are the children that you work with, how are they now? Like, I know there's m many of them. Are they part of what you do? Do they, do, do they come back and help Living Hope or, or do they go on to live, you know, uh, full lives as, as adults, young adults? It, it varies. Some of the kids that we've worked with, unfortunately, have ended up in prison or in bad situations. A large percentage of them have ended up very independent, married with their own children. Uh, percentage of them come back to us every holiday, every Christmas, Easter, New Year, they come back because we're their family. And so they come back and they say volunteer of any programme we're putting on or what we're doing. 
We have employed several of the kids over the years for different roles. And we have one young mother that I've known since she was uh, 11 years old living on the streets and she's now living with us with her children. And she's had an interesting situation coming and going. Uh, first child was rape, second child was you know, from the man that she was living with at the time who then ended up in prison. So after each birth she's ended up back with us. Uh, she became a Christian before the birth of her third child, really grew for God, really moved on. And I ended up taking her in as my apprentice and have been training her up to take on my role eventually one day. Unfortunately then she then succumbed to the influence of a gentleman who got her on drugs and she ended up a drug addict, lost her three children and then came back to us six months ago and then six months later now, two weeks ago, the government gave back her three children saying that as long as she stays with us, she's in a stable environment and their comment was, we can't believe how much of a family it is here, this is the best place for her kids. So that was quite encouraging for all of us. It's an awesome testimony to you and your work. Thank you. But on a personal level, there's been some changes in your life as well. Tell us about that. There has. Three years ago, we had one of our building teams from New Zealand came up. And on that team was a young man who felt very passionate about what we were doing and what was happening up there. And uh, eventually we hooked up, got married, and now we have a 20-month-old child. So now he's up there in Russia with me, working alongside what we're doing. It would be a very special person to stand beside you or to choose to be your husband. What was it about him that made you believe he was the one? Passion. He had a lot of passion for the things of God, a lot of passion to serve God. And I understood immediately that it didn't matter where he would be in the world, what he was doing, his heart was after God. And that's all I've ever looked for in a man. It would take a very brave person to do what you do. Would you obviously well need to be open to God to be able to do Wouldn't that? Wouldn't be able to do it without God. Rely on him so much every step of the way. If he wasn't part of it, I don't know how anybody could do what I'm doing. It's been lovely to hear what's happening in your uh, ministry and may the Lord continue to bless it. Thank you. It's been a pleasure being here. Mania Clark was talking there with Rachel Hughes about her work with Living Hope. And you can find out more information on their website, which is livinghope.org.nz. Again, that's livinghope.org.nz. Well, that's all we have time for this week. Thank you for joining us. Kaki Teono. God bless you.